So let's write our other result then. This, is the mag this was the magnitude of the electric field of a dipole on the axis. And I can erase this and just write the magnitude of the electric field of a dipole on the perpendicular axis this is a perpendicular bisector, right? It would, it would apply anywhere along, along this axis. And that is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Similar looking expression, except that there's no factor of 2 here. It's just QS over D cubed, or if again, I just make the substitution, call it R, we can just call it R cubed. So again, this, this is the approximation when R is much bigger than S, okay? Okay? So formulas that you don't have to memorize, but you should be familiar with the way dipoles behave. And, and you might want to just keep in mind that dipoles depend on 1 over the distance cubed. They depend on the charge and the charge separation. In fact, this quantity, Q times S, we often group those two things together and give it a name. This is called the electric dipole moment. And the symbol that's used is often lowercase p, which is a little unfortunate because it's the same symbol as momentum, but you have to live with it. p is equal to q times s. Okay. So why define this p thing? Well, for microscopic dipoles like molecules, it's often easy experimentally to measure directly the, uh, the dipole moment. You might not know the individual charge on each side of the dipole. You might not know how far they're separated. In fact, it's sort of a, for microscopic dipoles, it's more of a continuous separation rather than two points being separated. But you can measure the electric dipole moment. And so certain molecules may have a permanent value of the electric dipole moment. Okay, so it's a good quantity to keep in mind. It's actually a vector. Uh, it's actually a vector, and it points from <laughs> negative to positive, isn't it? I'm confused. Don't quote me on that. Check the book, okay? But there is a vector direction to it. And I think it might even be different for uh, chemistry versus physics. I think physicists, uh, physicists, I think, say it's from the negative to the positive, and chemists might say the opposite. It's in the book, so double check it. The direction, notice that these are just formulas for the magnitude, okay? We're not giving direction information here as we were with the electric field of a point charge uh, because you have to... It's going to change. It's going to de change depending on whether you're on the uh, axis or on the perpendicular. The direction you should just be able to work out for yourself. Okay? We went through qualitatively how to determine the direction last time by looking at the electric field of each individual charge and applying superposition. Uh, so if you're asked to write a vector expression, you might not be given, you might not be able to pull that out from the formula. You actually need to draw a picture, draw the electric fields due to the part. To, due to each charge, and work out what the direction is, and then figure out what the components have to be. And we'll, we'll be doing that a lot over and over again in this course. Okay? The directions is something that you need to work out often from physical situations, from the geometry of the problem, rather than just plugging into a formula and getting the numbers. Okay? Yes? This magnitude would be the same as if it were on the z-axis. That's correct, because the z-axis is also perpendicular to the dipole. right? And, and it's very, it's, it's one, one reason why I didn't label them X, Y, and Z is because, you know, it's going to vary the, depending on the orientation of the dipole, right? If I have a situation where my dipole is lined up like this, then this is now the perpendicular axis, right? And so I'd, I'd have to use that second formula along here and the first one along here. So be sure to, to go by the orientation of the dipole and not by just X, Y, or Z. Okay. 